and welcome to this week's how-to video. I'm Dave Davis, uh, CTO of DVS, also known as DITEC. Um, I've been for many years. So this week we're going to take a look at EPOS using the iSeries recorder and the Hike Central client to search for the actual um, metadata that, that, that we're looking for within the POS. So it could be um, a refund, for instance, or something. Um, and we're going to show you how to search it and download it really easily. Uh, thanks to Seagate for sponsoring these videos continuing. Thanks to all of you for liking, sharing, commenting, getting involved. The community is strong. Don't forget to like and subscribe where you'll be notified of any new content, which we try to do weekly. And uh, what we'll just show you how quickly is while we're by here, I'm going to show you a screen so you can see me looking at you through the NVR screen. So this, is, this screen here is connected to my iSeries NVR, which is what the pause is going to come on. So here you're going to see the text overlay when I use the pause. So every time I hit enter, it's sending pause information. So I can set refund. So that pause information is quite critical. So what we'll do is use the client now to go and search that information. I'll show you quickly how to set up the iSeries to receive pause generically over TCP. Um, and there's a, a little software tool to test it. And then you can actually uh, use the Hike Central client to retrieve that information. Stay with us, we'll be back in two ticks. Okay, welcome back. I'm gonna show you via the IMS 4200 interface. It's actually much easier for me to show you when we're doing our uh, presentation here. And I've moved myself to the bottom corner to give you a more fuller display. So open up IMS 4200 in the latest version. I've added my device here at the bottom to IMS 4200 as a device. I select remote configuration and I wanna select advanced. If I select general, it opens up a web browser style interface. If I open up advanced, it's still the old SDK style interface. So that will open up the box. I've got the pause function on the left hand side, expand that, channel filter rule. If, if I select that and select the appropriate camera, so we're using IP camera 2 on our system. So I've enabled it, so the pause text overlay is enabled, so that'll show in the live view on the screen. Uh, and I've moved my box, so I can position this box anywhere I like along the screen in any size, so the pause data will fit into that box. So if you want it in a specific area in the screen, you drag and drop that box and resize it. Overlay mode is scroll, but you can have page turning. The duration, the OSD color, I've selected red because it's more visual. The timeout is how long it stays on the screen and the font size. So we'll select large because again, it's more visual. So it's easier to see on live view and playback. We've associated a schedule and we've selected IP camera two as the associated camera. And we can also select linkage methods for um, if it's a, if you set up a keyword, say refund, that'll associate the camera with the event. Next one is connection mode. So under connection mode, so we're using camera two. So the, uh, we're using pause filter rule two because we're using camera two is easy to use for filter two so it all tied in. So the connection mode is TCP. So I'm running a TCP client on my desktop, which I'll show you shortly. I'm sending it via port 5302, but you can choose which port you, you send that on and the destination IP address or the IP address of the source, which is this tablet, which we're on now. So to clarify, the con connection mode is TCP. The port is the port I'm sending to the NVR, the listening port, and the IP address is this tablet. Um, but you, the connection mode can vary. So you can have TCP, RS-232, UDP, network interception, multicast, and USB to serial. So there's different methods of getting this POS data into our system, depending on your system setup. Most people will use TCP, and they will use um, a generic TCP. So what we can do is that's that, we'll save that. And under filter rule, if we select number two, and we've enabled it, we've got the encoding mode, so that's the, the, we've selected Latin one, and that's the only one on the local NVR. There's another one on the local NVR GUI interface. And the protocol type can be Epson, Nucleus, AV, VNet, AV, VS, IADD, and generic. So we've left ours as Epson. Um, so it's basically listening uh, out for Epson-based protocol. But you can put it to generic or any of the other ones should you have, be able to push that out through your EPOS system. We'll leave it as Epson. We'll save that. And we've done so the free there you go through and set that up on the nvr local gui is actually really easy to set up and present it in a much more graphical way so once we're happy we've done that we can close that down but then under main view on the 4200 i can select 
comma two. Put it as full screen. So we should. There we go. So the text is up in the corner. DVS refund up there. So that's fine. So what we'll do now is stop that. Close IMS 4200 down. So we finished our configuration. So the next thing I'm using to simulate POS data, again, you'd normally use a till, but it's really hard for me to set up a till um, and actually show you all that working. So I've downloaded the TCP UDP network assist. So that's the latest version, 4.3.13. Wait for that to close. It's a very simple uh, program application that you run. So for me to test POS into my NVI, I select the TCP client, but you can be a server client. You type the IP address of the NVI you're trying to send it to and the port that you're trying to send it to. So that's the listening port that we put in earlier. That's all you need to do and then click connect. You don't have to touch any of these settings whatsoever. And then whatever you type into this command box here, and click send will appear on the screen uh, on the NVR screen locally on the GUI uh, on playback etc let me try so if we just type refund in lowercase so you can't see it but it's coming up on my screen very nicely here so what we'll do now is to send a couple more there we go so I can leave that open so now if I select, um, I'm gonna run the hike central client now. So that will enable us to go into the video, search for the transactions and specific transactions, display all them and download them. So give me two seconds and I'll open up the client and I can show you that. Okay, um, welcome back. The more observant among you will realize I'm in different clothes. No, I'm not Clark Kent, I didn't change. Jake uh, messed up the third part of the video. So hashtag blame Jake. So we'll have to run through this little bit again, but it's really easy. So we've logged into Hike Central. Next thing we want to do is go into the video search. Hope if I clicked on the right screen, it is early. So on the video search in the client, you have something called transaction event. <clears throat> now, if you click on the blue thing, it says only some specific models of MVR are supported. So, obviously, we're using an I series, which is supported. Um, some of the HUHI DVRs are supported, but uh, check with us if you need to. So, under transaction event, you can uh, actually make it case sensitive. So, if you're looking for like refund and it's only in capitals, you can make it case sensitive. And you can do and or. So, we're going to type in refund, not case sensitive. Okay, and um, we're going to choose our camera. Yep, our camera will be on the 4K NVR. It's going to be on the pause test we did in the last seven days. Okay, click search. It'll go. Uh, why is that not working? Okay, so we got it back now. Um, the device, because I renewed my Hike Central license this morning and made some settings, I uh, had the device not in direct access mode, so I altered that, and now we can search for the results. So you've got two options. You've got them in list view or tile view. Um, it'll show you a thumbnail of all the footage. If I click on one, for instance, on the top left-hand side, on the right-hand side, it will start to play the footage. And you'll see there... If you keep a quick eye there, you'll see the refund in this uh, over stamp there. It is quite difficult to see because I uh, cleverly put the time and date right where the POS text was set to come up. Actually, this is a good point. So if you don't get any text on there, like I said, because I renewed the license, and some of the settings changed, go to home, go to system over here live view make sure that's fine just want to make sure they're okay yep yep overlay transaction information is off by default click save to turn it on now go back into the alarm event uh, sorry video search now click a video 
now you should see the text there so that's a nice little handy learning tip there you are dvs and it'll keep going through there and then you'll see refund in there dvs refunds there you go so we search for the word that's got refund in there so there's the associated footage and that was me obviously filming it so a couple of points one make sure you're prepared um or prepared to fail so the pause overlay make sure you turn it on because it's off by default and secondly um make sure you put your device in direct access mode that'll be fixed on the next version so again if i come down to one of the last events here let's go to the last page There is a lot of events because I left the pause streaming. So 11.48, that's the last one. So click on that. Again, that'll start playing and you'll see more text coming up on the screen. That'll con that's the time and date and then contain the word refund. There you go. Nice and simple. So you can see it works really, really well. And it's very simple to do. Um, you can zoom in and out there if you want to have smaller tiles you can make them smaller So the next thing you want to do if you want to download all of this footage so you can actually use it to, For like evidence or you know part of a case select them with the tick boxes Then we're going to click download And you can choose your path if you want to save it as an mb4 or as an avi etc So we'll save it as an avi you can merge recorded files. So it plays in one so we'll do that and click save now it's downloading, so click on the download center. There you go, so that's the video file we've asked, and it's merged all the files. So if we click on that, it should open that into VS Player. I will click on here, it opens up on my other screen. So here's the video file. Oh, drag that back over there. It's got audio on there as well because the camera I was using to record has audio on it. Let's mute that. Nobody wants to see me. So there's all the merge footage, but we didn't put the pause. There we are, DVS refund. So they'll just play that and put the pause overlay on it. So it really is as simple as that. Or you can do them one by one. Let's wait for that footage to stop. Yeah. So there are all the merge files together or back into the back in the video search. You can download them separately. So if I click download now, uh, not merge, then save, then download. You'll see there are all the files there. So if we look at that one there, it's an individual one. Right down to the last one there. Yeah, you get the idea. Very simple to use. So that is how to do pause on Hike Central. Really simple to do. Uh, you don't need an additional license. Hey, it's just part of the system. As long as you set it up right, the setup of it is more painful than the actual retrieving of it. But that's a simple walkthrough. What you can get if you do it properly. Hope you enjoyed it. Uh, hashtag blame Jake for this third part of the video. Hope you enjoyed it and see you next week for the next how-to video. Then you go into video search. Into transaction event. And you've got 